Good morning, good morning everybody and welcome to the dawn. Welcome to a beautiful morning here on Juma Private Game Reserve where it seems like all of the elephants have come out to say good day. Hello everybody, good morning, my name is Steve, I'm joined by Gat on Kara and we are very excited to have you with us this morning. We started this morning with some leopard tracks going down Western Quarantine, as I was trying to figure out last night. And they seem to have followed our vehicle and now gotten lost in amongst this decent sized herd of elephant. Now, there's probably one or two, maybe even three different groups that have come together with the teenage boys. There's a massive big marula tree just off to the right of the screen there that uh, fell over due to some rotting and it's been moved off of the road for some time now since I've been back and it seems like this whole herd of elephants has found it and are eating the bark. In front here we've got the teenage boys. They're too cool to hang out with the kids and uh, the ladies are way too cool and hang out on the edge where they can be naughty. What a way to start the morning. We saw this group from a distance and I thought to myself, when elephants accumulate in a group like that, quite often can mean that there's a baby being born. They're generally very vocal though when that does happen. But what has in fact happened is the largest marula around that's dead and dying on the floor is now being fed upon. Get everybody we are live and interactive and we would love to hear from you this morning so please do send through your questions you can scan the QR code or you can go to the website www.wildearth.tv forward slash questions where you can submit your questions there there's a little bit of a breeze this morning but it is apparently 23 degrees Celsius, 74 degrees Fahrenheit. And Tess is out and about. We'll have Chris with us shortly. Ralph Amakala and Amara will hopefully be joining us as well. Ashley, well it is Saturday indeed, so we hopefully will find you some cats because you would like to see them. Well, so would we. But this morning it looks like it's going to be off to a slow start with this herd of elephant. They are very relaxed. And the sun is just starting to rise over the back of them there, so we are in a beautiful place. Lovely opportunity. Just breathe it in and consider the week behind. This whole busy herd of elephants is in no urgency at all. You can learn a lot of lessons from that. Take your time. One task at a time. This day and age, we're so orientated to doing 15 things at once that we don't actually put our attention where it should be. Okay, everybody, well, the weather's looking beautiful here this morning. Let's go see what it looks like across all properties. Mm. 
good morning everybody welcome to a, what's hopefully gonna be a lovely day here out at Pridelands we're gonna have a stunning sunrise yet again right over there so if you just look over my shoulder right over there we're gonna have a sunrise and we're gonna be just enjoying that for a moment in a moment or two my name is Chris and with me on camera ops is Panda and our plan again this morning is to go and do a lovely bushwalk and hopefully we'll be able to get something that we can track we know that the herd of buffalo was heading towards leopard dam so what we'll do is we'll probably drive up to leopard dam uh, after this epic sunrise and look for some tracks and hopefully there'll either be the herd of buffalo or perhaps even lions trailing those buffaloes and we can get out on foot and we're going to enjoy the splendor of the African bush on foot this morning. But for now, we're just waiting for the sun to come out. Well, forecasts suggests that we are in for another relatively hot day. Temperatures likely to head up to about 35-ish degrees. The morning is still chilly, which is great walking conditions, great game viewing conditions. And from about 11, 12 onwards, the mercury will definitely rise a bit. And the afternoon will very likely be a repeat of tomorrow. Very hot, wind still, very clear day. But for now, I think conditions are, if I can say, near perfect for bushwalk. It's borderline cold at the moment. And that will change. That will change literally within the hour. Why Keisha? Just mentioning beautiful and peaceful sunrise. Let's enjoy it. Why Keisha? That's exactly what we're going to do now. I'm actually going to keep quiet now and do exactly what you suggest there. Let's enjoy it. Just a short, quiet moment, just to get our thoughts in line, our minds focused for the day. We're going to be heading out to Leopard Dam and start our walk. But let's go over to Tessa to say good morning. I'm excited for your bushwalk today, Chris, and it is a great moment to just get your thoughts in line, take it in for the morning. Good morning, everybody. I have started my morning with a view at Chilapan because it's amazing. My name is Tess. I'm going to be your guide on safari here for the morning. Behind the camera today is Paul with a very cute thumb. <laughs> and we are going to be looking for some leopards. But I had a feeling about Chilapan, about Spaghetti Junction. I had a dream about Lalamba. So we're going to see if it works out today. But we decided to start with some beautiful dawn chorus sounds. A sunrise over Chilapan. And with a little bit of calm. Hopefully before the cat chaos. That would be good. We need a good old catter day today. Happy Saturday, happy cat of the day. Listen to those beautiful calls. 
We are being serenaded this morning. This is everything from doves to grey go away birds to tawny flanked preneas, arrow marked babblers, even an orange breasted bushrock and a white bellied sunbird calling. And I don't know if it was my imagination or not this morning, but I could have sworn I heard a woodlands kingfisher when I woke up. Maybe I was still dreaming. Oh, a grey-headed bushrack as well. Janet, I think it is definitely going to be an awesome spring day. We're already off to a fantastic start with those elephants and some beautiful sunrises. Lovely sounds. So let's hope the luck continues from here. Work hard and sometime you shall receive. <laughs> And here crested Franklins as well, the odd Natal Spurfowl. It's just too beautiful with all of these sounds this morning. Hopefully we do get lucky. But from here, let's see if we can find a leopard this morning. Sign up to be an explorer and watch Wild Earth totally ad-free. Yep, you heard me right. No ads at all. And not only this, but by becoming an explorer, you help us on our mission to conserve wildlife. You spread awareness about these creatures and you contribute to helping our planet. Enjoy Wild Earth as it is intended, naturally, uninterrupted, and totally advert-free. Sign up today for this and so much more from Wild Earth. here with our herd of elephants. We are being surrounded by them. This is a truly, truly magical way to start the day. I can't think of a better way. We've just come around this herd to get on the other side of them, the direction that they're moving. They are very 
relaxed. And then just behind us there's uh, tracks of where a female leopard was lying. We haven't followed up on it yet because we're ensconced by a herd of elephant. So we do love to check this Western Quarantined Bush Bryce out for our cats. So I was trying to do at the end of drive last night and it seems like I was just a little bit late. <laughs> Sorry about my head. Feeding on the large fruited bush willows. These are all last season's leaves. Finding some element of protein in there. when <laughs> sorry about any audio issue there that I'm gonna stick that whole stump in her mouth Megan Edwards, so many beautiful scenes this morning. We are truly blessed. Now, what's she going to do now? She says something. <laughs> Look at that one. Look, I'm a big elephant too. I'm a big elephant right behind my mum. This young teenager, yeah, is also right with mum. So spending time with elephants, everybody, is such a special opportunity. And it's important to understand the behavior so that you can spend time with them. You know, many people are able to go to the Kruger Park on self-drive tours. I'm not sure if most people know what to do. First things first, when you come across a herd that aren't really moving. They're all standing around and you can physically see the babies. It's an incredibly good sign that the herd is relaxed. If you can hear them feeding, visually see them feeding, especially the big females, don't worry too much about what the youngsters are doing. If the youngsters come out of the herd and approach you with ears raised and make noises, that's okay. But always just watch out what the big females are doing. Because if they're not happy, I promise you, you will know about it very early on. And if they're feeding like this and slowly walking in your general direction, switch the car off. Don't leave an engine running. Don't leave the engine running because those noises of cars can be quite frustrating to a herd. They're very sensitive to noises. So just switch off. <laughs> well, don't know 
about all of you, but I am feeling truly, truly blessed this morning. And the bush bry site is getting a makeover of note of all the vegetation in the area. Kelly, this is probably my favorite thing to do, so it's my pleasure. We were tracking male leopard tracks and we saw this accumulation of elephants. As we got closer, we just realized how many there were. Gat, he's got a tick on his nipple. <laughs> if he moves his shoulder again. Oh, shame. Now this... 20 year old, 22 year old boy, 24 year old boy came into the herd and pushed people around. So we'll see if he gets tolerated. He gets tolerated by the female. Here goes the bulldozer in action. He's learning how to push things around how to climb over logs. It's a very important part of elephant behavior is to climb over. There we go. <laughs> Lift the legs over the logs. This is when they have uh, upgraded, when they're able to walk over small stumps and up hills and down hills. Now, you're seeing a baby in the open like this, relaxed. You would not see this folks if the herd was not relaxed. This young boy is feeling brave enough to walk out in the open to come investigate the car. The mums are watching, they're nearby watching but they're their intuition of the situation is one of being completely calm and there's no negative behavior. Please go ahead and send through a short sentence or a one word. How does this make you feel? Okay, I'm going to reposition. Reposition. And see if we can get another view of this head.
yeah, I was about to to get into the car and drive towards our intended destination, Lepidam, to start our bushwalk. But when you have a sunrise like this, you gotta milk it. You just gotta milk it. Another reason, there's a practical reason as well. So when the sun is still very low, before it really casts its rays on, on the ground, it's difficult to see tracks. So even while driving on route there, I was actually waiting for the sun to just rise a little bit so I've got a bit more light on the ground while driving in order to see tracks much better. So now's a good time within the next two, three minutes. Conditions will be good enough to drive out and, 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 and head to our destination. But on route there, we might miss tracks. So that's one of the reasons why I'm also waiting for the sun to just rise a little bit, which it has done. And at the same time, it's just an experience to just see it going further up and up and up. But soon after this, we will definitely embark. And hopefully the next time you see me, we will be tracking something on foot which you all know is one of my favorite activities out here in the bush. So let's go. Grab your gear and follow me. We have gotten so lucky. We decided while we were at Chela Pan, we could hear a, a strange noise. It sounded a bit like growling. So we thought, let's have a quick look if the hyena den is active. We haven't even gotten there yet, and we've got a hyena on Taxon's Road. Having a lovely nap. Occasionally interested in something southwest of Treehouse Dam. Excuse me when I talk on the radio. Go ahead. I'm at the entrance to the Mesikaya now with one Messi on Taxon's Road. Okay, and ear wise, <laughs> that sounds really weird to say ear wise, you know that this is one of the ways that we ID the hyenas. Ear wise, it almost looks like ribbon to me. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. She's also got a bit of a feather pattern on the side. But the left ear in particular, remember it got so tattered from fighting with the clan when they sorted her out and overthrew her as the matriarch back to the bottom. Oh wait, she just looked at us there. Didn't get a nice clear view of the left ear. My initial instinct was either corky or ribbon because they both have a tattered left ear and a bit of a tatter on the right ear. But I feel like I'm confusing myself this morning and I really shouldn't be. <laughs> But I feel like with the spot pattern on the side combined with the ear, I think it's ribbon. Because Corky doesn't have that. You see down her side there. She doesn't have that same bottom streak with bits going up, that exact pattern there. I feel like Corky doesn't have that. But ribbon kind of does. Ribbon's got a bit of a feather on the side. I also haven't been able to see a tail as of yet, but she is tucked in, this hyena. Nicely tucked in. <laughs> that definitely doesn't help.
<laughs> Laura Cam, it is so good to have spots this early on a Saturday morning, let me tell you. Even if it is um, a hyena we haven't seen in a while, that's even more exciting. You know, if it's ribbon, which I think it is, but I might be wrong, then that is uber exciting because I haven't seen ribbon close to the den in ages. I've seen her on Chitwa Chitwa twice in the last few months. We've seen her ambling around in between then, moving around quite far from the den, but we have not seen her at the den in quite a while. Definitely looking like the relaxing mood this morning. 100% looking like the relaxing mood. And I think we could all take a leaf out of that book every now and then. Just have a little bit of a relaxing, quiet moment on your own, letting it sink in, you know, all these things. Interesting that the hyena is lying here. So we're at the junction. She's lying in the triangle between Texans Road and the entrance to the den. So a little patch of grass next to a impala midden. Interesting that she's lying here and not at the den site itself. Oof, she keeps hearing something towards Treehouse Dam. Let me see if I can change the angle a little bit. We know they are super relaxed, so maybe she'll let us down the side. Yay! Confirmation it is Ribbon. Thank you so much for the confirmation. Hello girl, we've not seen you here in a while. Hey pretty girl. What you doing? Now I can see you've got a lovely little storm start, a stumpy tail. She's healed so incredibly well so it's super impressive that she has bounced back this much. There you can see the ear quite nice and clearly. The way we were sitting earlier, we definitely couldn't see the ear nicely. So Corky's got the one split in the top of her left ear and Ribbon has got the tattered look. We could only really see the top, we couldn't see the bottom. Now if she lifts her head, we should be able to see the whole ear. But she's just looking so relaxed. Oh, she's looking very sleepy. All right, I think what we'll do, she'll probably still be here in two minutes if the den's not active. Let's quickly go in and check if the den is active. Sorry, girl. Oh, I can see the scarring on her ear from like here, that pink behind her ear. Let's go and see if the den is active and then we'll come back to the lovely Miss Ribbon. It is so good to see her at the den site again. So the first den site is literally right here where June's cubs are, we think. We haven't seen them in a while. I haven't seen June at the den since sometime in August, I think. Let's go and have a look. Maybe we'll get lucky at the other den site. Ribbon looks extra fluffy this morning, don't you think? That feather pattern is super fluffy. Oh, I'm still a little bit in disbelief that Ribbon is so close to the gym. Lucky, lucky. Right, it's looking a little bit quiet for now. I'm not that surprised, it is very early in the morning. Right. <laughs> Lisa, it is so good to see Miss Ribbon again and she is looking so lovely and relaxed. She's looking in very good condition. The last few times I've seen her, she's been looking amazing. So she's definitely bounced back. And um, it makes more sense to me now why she's close to the den site because there's no other adults here. It's completely empty. There's nobody home. Nobody. So that's all right. Let's call that in on the radio. Stations, the Mesikaias are inactive. There's just one adult on Texans Road Junction with the entrance to Mesikaia. Alright, let's go back to the. Excellent view, pulling up there. 
yeah, I'm pulling out of the me surprise. I'll just go sit with that adult. You're welcome to join me with that adult. Okay, thank you. Right, Gabe is gonna come and join us for ribbon. She's a famous hyena after all. She is revered around the world as the fighter, the one who fought back, the one who changed everything. And then still kept going. She's resilient. Love it. But yes, we tend not to see Ruben too much around the den when the other adults are around. So it doesn't surprise me that much now that Miss Ribbon is here. Alright, cool. Hello Miss Ribbon, we're going to park on the other side of you now. How about that? Sweet girl, I'm going to do it this way and reverse a bit. We can see you in the sun, okay, sweetheart, with one little branch perfectly over your face, as usual. Hey, Mpo, <laughs> there's always one branch. Have a look when Mpo shows you her face. There's one little twiggy shrub. <laughs> you are just looking so relaxed this morning, girl. There, you can see that tattering on her ear. Are oh, you getting up? Sure, and you have eaten. Big belly. That is amazing. All right, she is moving. I'm going to move this way. Not sure exactly where she's going to go from here. Her cubs have not been at these den sites. Her cubs have been in the drainage line, so she might go straight over to the drainage line. There she goes. Yeah, I think she's going to go straight down past that one. Gut feel, I'm going with my gut feel here. She's going to go straight down towards the drainage line, which is over there at Ingwe Alley. She's heading that way. Gabe, come in. And gone. All right, so we're not going to follow her that way because we don't off-road randomly for the hyenas. But we'll see where she goes. Maybe she'll pop up at the junction of Philemon's Dip or something like that. That is the general sense of direction. For now, Steve is very excited about something and I don't know what. Well... Audio. Let me just put that over there. We have found a leopard in a tree. Well, Western quarantine, you beauty. Now I'm going to try identify this cat, but I can't at the moment tell you who exactly it is because I don't, from this distance, recognise the face. And it's just moving in. It's got a nyala kill up the tree. It looks like it might be Shadulu. Got a nyala kill up the tree here, and uh, the tracks were pretty fresh. And checking Western Quarantine last night was the objective to try and find ourselves a spotted cat. And well, look at what we found! Yay! So we're going to move sh forward shortly, but no, it looks like Shadulu to me. I'm looking through my binoculars. Poor little Nyala. Oh, it might not be Shadulu. I haven't seen all of these cats for some time. But maybe one of you out there who knows our leopards intimately can confirm for me. We were coming past, we saw the elephants, and I heard some Franklin's shouting. I think there's a male leopard in the area as well. And I have 
Yeah, it does look like stool. And I have unfortunately put my left wheel into some leopard scat. So we're going to have to be very aware of our positioning this morning with regards to wind direction. Hmm, Shadulu confirmation coming through. Fantastic. And a lovely big false thorn. Albitia. One of our worm barks. This is a splendid tree, Shadulu. Thank you for poising yourself. I, from a distance, we were about to come down here and I saw something that just stood out a bit and uh, started throwing my hands in the air in absolute ecstatic excitement because this is what we've been looking for. Right, can I move forward now? Okay. Now we've established it's definitely not Mawati. So Mawati is not a very relaxed cat, but Shadulu, she is, well, very, very chilled even on foot. And I was actually going to park the car and take a little walk down here to see where those tracks had gone because they were coming straight towards this drainage and there we have it. A Nyala carcass up the tree. That's going to be there for some time. She loves this western bank of quarantine. Laura Cam, well it is cat today. So we needed to find you a cat of some description. And well, Shadulu is definitely right up there on the to find list. And she couldn't be posing better for you right now, everybody. The quintessential Sabi sand leopard in a tree. Just take a moment though to um, hold some space for the poor Nyala that has succumbed to Shadulu's hunting. There is a Nyala perched behind her on the tree, which is, is dead. But it is part and parcel of the circle of life. The prey animals avoid predation a lot. The predators get quite good at hunting but the prey animals get quite good at avoiding predation and with only a 20 odd percent success rate many animals avoid or evade predation but then the odd few that do fall victim sustain the legacy of the predators of Juma. Explorers, we want to hear from you. How crazy is that? Join us on the 11th of September at 8 p.m. for another town hall with the CEO of Wild Earth, Graeme Wallington, where you can give us your feedback on Wild Earth. We want to hear about your Wild Earth experience and answer any questions that you may have. Come along for the catch up and give us your insights. And remember to sign up if you aren't already an explorer.
I don't know yet how to size this up. I'm in two minds. Is this a male and a female in Treehouse Dam, or is this two males? Maybe you can tell me what you think. Do you think it's two males and they're starting a territorial dispute? Or do you think this is a male and a female and they're starting a bit of a courtship? It's very difficult to tell the difference in the first kind of few hours, a day, two days. For now, I don't think it's been violent enough. I kind of think it's a male and female. Courtship is very strange <laughs> in hippos, and the noises he's making are even stranger. Maybe he's just so over the moon at having some company that he can't keep quiet about it. to be able to see what's happening under the water. This is when you need a little window into the dam. Listen to those noises. Interestingly, the other one has not made a noise yet. At all. Not once. But it seems like every time the male comes up, he's making those noises. I'll never forget myself and Paul were lucky enough to see two hippos fighting at Gauri Dam at night. It started in the day, but it went right through the night. Angel, I'm glad I'm not the only one that's not sure what to make of the scene. It is very curious. Based on the shape of the heads, that's what I'm going on. For now, that's what my gut is telling me, but also based on the fact that the one is very vocal and the other one isn't. If it had been a territorial dispute, my gut feel tells me, and based on what I know from hippos, my gut feel tells me they would both be fairly equally vocal and they would both be bouncing around, where it's mostly him, that one that's just popped his head up, that's bouncing around. But the shapes of their heads are a little bit different and it's very tough to tell the difference between male and female hippos especially when you can only see the tops of their heads but he's got more pronounced nostrils and kind of upper lips there you can see it a little bit more chunky a little bit more hairy slightly bigger orbitals around his eyes as well more pronounced but this other hippo is also big there's a maybe a slight size difference It almost looks like he's f kind of sinking himself down to the bottom and then hopping up. As he hop up, hops up, he makes a noise and breathes and then he goes back down. <sighs> How odd. So this is my first time ever seeing two hippos in Treehouse Dam. To see an interaction is even better. The other hippo is kind of just watching on. I don't know if they're communicating under the water. Uh, I know, just by the way we work as humans, that we try our best to determine what might be happening here interaction-wise, but sometimes we may never actually know what's actually going on. So maybe we'll figure it out as we go, maybe we won't. But for now, I think I'm going to sit with the hippos for a bit longer and see if we can figure it out, and I'll send you to Steve, who's still got Shidulu.
Apologies for that, everybody. So it seems like she's probably been here for a day already. And the tracks we had now were her going to drink and then coming back. It's a, it's a wonder that the male leopard that tracks came in this direction didn't find this because he would have he would have stolen it for sure. You don't find male and female leopards feeding casually on the same kill. The bigger and the stronger will dominate. And uh, she was sitting very uncomfortably for quite some time, which initially I thought maybe she'd fed a lot in the night, but when she tried to move the nyala, the entire middle section of the nyala is not there. I don't see a head either, but we'll see. We'll reposition a few games shortly and try to get it under view. That moment when you see something in a tree that's not quite right and you pick up the binoculars and through the binoculars spots fill your eyes. Gets me incredibly excited. Excited and the elephant energy this morning has just boiled over to a wonderful start to Catterday. Leopard lover, lover, my pleasure. I enjoy, I enjoy breaking the drought as much as you do. And well, someone is in waiting in anticipation. Curled up underneath the tree, resting, waiting for some scraps to fall. I can't tell you who that is by the back of the head. It is a hyena, that is certain. There are some crowned lapwings calling off to my left. I wouldn't be surprised if there is another cat on its way here. Those male leopard tracks were fresh. It wasn't a fully mature male, I don't know who young male leopard would be moving through. This area has the ability to just provide incredible leopard sightings of random cats. <laughs> That's some very brave go away birds. It is going to be a warm day today. I think yesterday's warm day, if this kill was up there, is already started to dry out. I'm not surprised if it's going to turn into biltong sooner rather than later.
interesting. <laughs> I don't think I'd be too interested in eating that build song, but if Shidulu and the hyena are happy, then I suppose that's all that matters. I will not be indulging. But I do agree, it is going to be hot enough today to potentially turn that meat straight into biltong. Unseasoned biltong. I have to add some natural herbs and spices. Okay, we're still trying to figure out what is happening at Treehouse Dam. Is this a potential love story? Is it a potential friendship? Is it a potential fight? I don't know. Occasionally, I almost feel like he's pushing the other one backwards because it'll be underwater and then all of a sudden we'll see its back come out and it gets pushed a bit backwards. But it's so passive, it's not doing anything back, it's not calling back, it's not pushing back. The only thing we've seen it do is it opened its mouth once, very playfully. Look there, he's kind of bouncing at it. This is very typical courtship. They kind of bounce at each other and open their mouths and push each other around a bit. It is at least a little bit safer, I suppose, than zebra courtship. That can be quite scary because they bite and kick each other. But he is certainly being very dramatic today. Very vocal hippo for the first time in ages. We're hearing him being vocal every time he comes out the water. Maybe a mystery we simply cannot solve yet. Right, bringing you back to one of my favorite spots at Pridelands. It's that big rock slab, that big sort of granite dome. And uh, I wanted to bring Panda here. Panda's never been here. So it's a little surprise for Panda to experience this beautiful spot. No particular reason we here other than we are walking in the area and what I love about this rock slab is the artwork not human art nature art ancient art made by forces bigger than we can understand just look at this so we've got this granite slab but just look at how cracks formed in this granite and the quartz recrystallized and you've got these veins of quartz running and look at that that's the precision everything look at that because it's vein running so it basically happened here this is ancient granite dating back to about two billion years ago granite is a intrusive igneous rock so it's magma deep inside the crust of the earth that's solidified slowly cooled down giving granite its its, its distinctive coarse crystalline structure and further forces later on put more pressure and subsequent heat on the granite and it causes certain minerals to become a fluid again some stayed in a solid state so remember granite's a whole cocktail of rock and minerals now quartz being a very resilient mineral becomes liquid at a very high temperature so what would have happened here is a lot of the other minerals would have become a liquid, including the quartz. And what will then happen with those extra forces on it, 
eventually it will cool down and as it cools down think about mud you know when it cools down the volume decreases but the quartz still stays liquid and it filled the cracks and that's why you have those veins of quartz in this granite actually gneiss which is the metamorphic version of granite but we'll continue this now let's quickly go over to the Masai Mara for Samuel to say good morning Uh, jumbo, jumbo, all our viewers in the globe. My name is Samuel Rade, and my cameraman is Big James. Yeah, in Mara, we have the elephants. The L is being one of the big five. Yeah, so interesting to watch. And you see if they are going as a family or as a herd because they have small babies or small cubs there. And you see that one, if I look at her or him, she's like less than a year. Because an elephant start to protrude its task when it is two to three years. This one seems like it is almost two years or three years. Do you see this one? That is why it is called the African elephants because of its ears. How close is she bringing its baby even closer and wanting to come and grace? Or even maybe she just wanted to say hi to us with her small baby there. Hi. See how is eating, coiling, moving like a spaghetti. It's morning breakfast. And see sometimes elephants do usually throw their, the grass maybe to remove uh, the sand so that they cannot eat it with the sand. See how they are beautiful. And the lifespan of an elephant is 60 years. And you see how close they are here. And you see the temporal blood are okay. Because if you want to know an elephant, is stressed, you look at the temporal gland. And let's go to Steve and see what he has. Hmm. Well, Samuel, we've got an incredible sighting here of Shudhulu, the female leopard and a sub-adult Nyala female I wouldn't say it's a fully grown female and I'm, I'm debating the age of the kill because um, now that she's repositioned it it's a lot more floppy than it was before it was a little bit she moves it initially it was quite hard as if it's been in the sun for some time our station on uh, West Hmm. I wonder if I'm just trying to communicate a game drive story, but the game drive radio has decided not to work anymore. Ah, he's got us. Okay, game drive radio is not working. 
that's okay. We can turn it off. The other vehicle is making their way in. But, um, if you don't like seeing kills everybody, it's not the most ideal time to be watching, but this animal has been killed by this leopard to sustain it, to sustain its life, to sustain its uh, to sustain it. Leopards are predators. They are hunters of the highest degree. And the ability that we have to view them like this is truly quite magical. We might hear another vehicle joining us in the sighting. She's using the carnassial shear right now of her side cutting teeth. Carnassial shear teeth are where our molars are. Very sharp cutting teeth that leopard have, that predators have. It is the definition of a predator. Those teeth are what define a predator, not the canines. Bearing in mind the boon have got incredibly large canines and they are not predators. And we will at one point try to show you the hyena that's here waiting for some scraps, but uh, it's at the bottom of the tree and very hard to see at this given moment. Shadulu was moving the carcass around and hyena got very excited at the prospect of something and a little piece of something fell. We don't know what it was, but it got gobbled up. Oh, there we go. There's a hyena. Now, if any of you can identify it like that, I'd be most impressed. So, we tracked and found this leopard this morning, everybody. So, we are not going anywhere. As leopard lover said before, thanks for breaking the drought. People do start getting a bit, a bit worried in the Sabi Sand Wildlife Reserve when we don't see a leopard in two or three days. It is nature, it is the way it goes. Sabi Sands has got an incredible density of leopard, as do other areas, but this area is just very well used to tracking them and finding them all the time. That cannot be June. June has got a floppy ear. I'm sure that's not June. I know June very well. June is a older girl and she's been beaten. Yeah, I could be mistaken, but uh, this hyena has got two very clean ears. But I'm no expert. I do remember June having a very badly damaged ear. Mm, no, no, no floppy ears, everybody. Uh, June, corky, uh, heart, and Ntima, now in Debele, unable to identify them. Not always the rest of them, though. You might hear other voices. As I said, we are not alone in this sighting.
The weekly fireside chat in the Mara have been a joy to be a part of. We have looked at many memorable moments so far. The hyenas were eating one side and the lions were eating on the other side. I've never seen that before. Caught up with our expeditioners. There's just something about being here. And had front row seats to all of our expert hosts' insights. Depending on the seasons, there is something they would particularly go for. Join us for one last Mara fireside chat on the 10th of September. If you ever get to Africa, you have to go on at least one bushwalk. Now what we're doing is we've got this beautiful hippo path. You can see it's very broad. This is made by hippo. And I'm basically just really walking around aimlessly at the moment. But it's so enjoyable. We don't have anything to track. We're just literally soaking up the bush. Very much like the Japanese custom of, I think it's Shinrin Yoko, which is forest bathing. We go out into the woods with no plan, no direction plan. You just go in and walk and you literally just soak up your surroundings and nature. And it does wonders for one system, really. It, and as you walk, just, you know, I always like to touch things. It just connects you deeper and deeper to nature. You know, while you're walking on this hippo path, you know, you think about how many hippos have had to walk in order to create this path. You see the elephant dung from about three weeks old, wondering where that elephant is now. Maybe it's 50 kilometers from here. We never know. It's the type of things that goes through your mind as you walk. And it's just a really intimate experience. Not only with nature, but specifically the African bush. Obviously, there's some dangerous animals around, so you always have to keep your vigilance. But this is a relatively open area, so therefore my pace is a little faster than usual. Because I can see what's up ahead.
right, so I'm going to head a little bit further south. I'm going to check out the burnt areas. So there's not perhaps a tracks of anything that we can track. And you know what, Steve, still with Shadulu, one of my favorite, favorite leopardesses. So let's go and see what's happening there. Thanks, Chris. Good luck and with your tracking this morning. You know, Shadulu is next to Asana, my favorite, favorite leopard. I've spent a lot of time with her and tracked her on foot. I've actually stood like this on foot after tracking her, watching her feed, and she didn't react. She was quite happy on her kill up the tree. She's the daughter of the Ingrid Dam female down south in Ottawa, Singita side. I remember being on a on a bumble years ago when she just materialized. Ooh, where are you gonna go? You're going up. <clears throat> My goodness, that was some power. That is incredible strength. You saw the intention on her eyes. She looked at a spot. She just leaped two and a half meters. Incredible. Another small piece of something fell down and our hyena was very quick to move in, but it's very dense down below. Oh, don't drop it now, my girl. You've done such a good job. So she's repositioned it as it starts to get a little bit floppy, the kill, which was very well positioned at one point. It was folded in half over itself, and I thought then it was it was an old kill. But now as she moves it, you can see how how movable it still is, how loose. And she's now that she's fed on it a bit more, it's a lot lighter and she's able to move it further. She's probably going to leave it there. She might feed a little bit more, but uh, she might decide to have a nap. Once it's nicely hoisted in a suitable spot, she'll feel quite comfortable for the rest of the day, and she will most certainly be here, unless she drops it on the floor this afternoon. Now the height above ground is remarkable. Trying to move a dead weight animal all that way up. I mean, that is incredible skill. An experienced hunter, Anna Marie, their ability to balance is astounding, you are right. The ability to take that huge weight in your jaws and jump with it difficult. I remember going snowboarding and learning how to snowboard with a backpack on my back and just having a little bit of weight in that backpack, how much that influenced my balance. So it takes them their first two years to really get the hang of moving the prey animals through the trees to hoist to suitable places. Many times they drop it, many times they lose it two hyenas at the bottom and that is one of the reasons why a hyena will just hang there waiting knowing the inevitable could happen we re will reposition when you leave us to try get another view but for now this is where we are another benefit of trees that we talk about the benefits of trees for for us for shade the animals feeding 
And well, leopards wouldn't do as well in this area with all the hyenas and lions if they didn't have these large trees to hoist in. Amanda, they do get quite tired with hunting, but now that the kill has been established and hoisted, she's able to regain her energy. And it's one of the benefits of hoisting, is that the animal will be able to ingest most of what she's captured. That's why we have a prey selection. Young leopards sometimes will catch prey that's they're unable to hoist, and all that means is they're going to lose it. If you can't hoist it, the hyena is going to steal it from you. And if it's also too big and you can't find the right tree, or you can't get it high enough, you run the risk of lions stealing it. But where it is right now, the only risk she would have is if a male leopard came along to try and steal it from her. But you're looking at two days, plus minus, maybe even three, She's now sorted for food, which will keep her going for some time. she go through bouts of feeding and sleeping right on the spot. Laura well, Cam is possible. It's possible. I think it was starting to slip and slide where it was, so she just wanted another, another place. But yeah, it's possible that something else is wafting towards her. I think she wanted to get it as high as she could initially, but it was still quite heavy after feeding on it the whole night. It's lost a huge amount of weight and now she's able to take it up another three, four meters. And she's just watching. Anything different? What, what, I, what I would do? Yeah. No, I, I agree because then, then, uh, Right, so, sorry guys, we're just discussing there's an elephant right here in the burnt area. And uh, we're planning to see if we can't get closer. Now we're just checking the wind. Uh, the rain is favorable. We've got the sun at our backs, tick number one. Burnt area, not a lot of grass, so we can approach quietly, tick number two. Now the wind sort of moving, swirling in this direction. So we saw the elephant there. So the best thing is to go around into the burnt area. And the only thing that's against us, the elephant will have the high ground. But it's just one parameter that's not in our favor. Okay. So let's go. We're going to head into this 
We also want to make sure that this is not a breeding yet. I only see one young bull. There's a lot of elephant tracks around here. So let's just check. What I love about it, your visibility because of the burn is so much better. Okay, I'm going to keep my voice down a little bit. The elephant is right up ahead. No rush. There's no rush to get close quickly. Because you want to make sure that everything is safe. Okay, there's some impala. Right, so now that's another variable that comes in. Those impalas might potentially vocalize when they see us. They've probably seen us already. So we can't go too close to them. But our wind is good, so now we can head straight to the elephant. Slowly, because we want to make sure that there's no other elephants around that can surround us. Okay, I'm just going to stand here and check with the binoculars to see where the elephant is. Can't see it now. But it is up ahead. Uh, good morning from here in the Maasai Mara. We are coming to you live here in Maasai Mara. And we have one of the black rock male here. And as you see, is on a shed of a tree. Uh, maybe it's relaxing or wanting to take a nap. Maybe after a long day or a long night. This might be the best way. See, maybe he intend to look for his brothers because the black rock consists of five big males and He's just looking, maybe he might have lost his brother or maybe his brother have went to look for something that they can make a breakfast. But we found him here at relaxing. Big males of lions sometimes do form collisions and Sometimes they do go and form a pride by fighting to the other pride. And you see this one seems like he want to stretch, maybe he want to wake up. Or maybe he's just smelling his brother where they are, that is why he's on the direction of the wind. The male of lions will tell you... Oh, no. oh, thank you so much, Nikki. Yes, it is true, the name of Simba in Swahili is a lion. See, this one seems like he's having a wound or an injury. See, he's going slowly. And let's see on how, what he's going to do here. A big male, one of the black rock. There he's smelling on the branches. It's moving, coming forward. Maybe he will want to sleep. And let's go to Steve and see what he has there.
guys, we just found some elephant tracks and we were just about to track it. And I heard branches breaking right over there. There's at least one elephant bull. I heard of Impala right here, but just behind them there's more elephants. All right. I like the terrain here. It's burnt. So visibility is, is, is good. We've got the wind in our favor. We've got the sun in our favor. The only thing is they've got the high ground, which is not a major problem because it's not really much of a of an ascent. So I think we're in for a good conditions to do an approach. So join me. All right, so this is what bushwalking is about. All right, so we're going to walk quietly. Guys, I'm not going to talk much. Just come here. The elephant is right there. Okay. We just need to keep checking on our flanks, and that's what... Willem's going to do a backup, which is right behind Panda. We want to use this bush here as cover to get closer to the elephant, all right? What we want to do is get in, get a shot, get out, without the elephant knowing we're here. Okay, so we must get quiet, 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 quiet. Come, let's go, let's go, let's go. Elephants close by, but these are right there, right there, right there. We can go a little closer. I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm very happy. It's a young bull. Let's go to this marula tree here. Well, I'm just keep checking for other elephants. I can see more elephants down there. But this is all cool because this is the closest one. to break our outline so the elephant can't see us. Okay, so Panda, you want to get low here. There he is. Willem, keep your eye on the left here. I can see more Ellie's there. But we're good. This is good stuff. Enjoy. I'm going to keep quiet. He's right behind that tree. We've got a lot of cover here, so we can reposition. The other elephants are further that way. There's quite a lot of them. Could potentially be a breeding herd. And normally we don't approach a breeding herd. There's just too many elephants to deal with. But in this case, and he's hurt us now. And he's happy. I'm not going to go further that way. Because that elephant, there's, there's a lot of elephants down there. We have this elephant, we can view it. Let's... Now he's hurt us. Okay. Alright, now he's hurt us. So we're going to probably extract. That was a branch breaking. Anyway, let's go over to Tessa to see what she's up to. Oh, Chris, that sounds like an incredible, oh, incredible way to spend the morning. And there goes the owl. <laughs> so typical. <laughs> so we've got the spotted eagle owl. I think it's Mrs. Wig. She was very well camouflaged. And unfortunately, she's being so badly mobbed by Birchall starlings this morning that she has been struggling to find a spot to calm down. So every time she lands, she seems to move again. We actually have an elephant as well, but it's also hiding. 
I'm very sad now that you didn't get to see Mrs. Wig for very long. But it's really cool to see her because knowing she's around, we could only see one this morning. We've been seeing two the last few days. Knowing she's around and also expanding her range a bit so she's not back where she normally was. She was quite a bit further south. That's quite exciting. Maybe she's scouting nesting sites. But I think more than anything, she's just desperately trying to get away from all of those starlings. So a very typical virtual starling moment, very similar to fork-tailed drongos, very similar to even orioles join in sometimes. Cape glossy starlings, virtual starlings, orioles, and fork-tailed drongos. Oh, the elephant's coming back out, we might get lucky. Um, they really like to actively mob birds of prey. And so there were probably 30 starlings in total that were busy mobbing this poor owl every time she moved. So she can't settle anywhere for too long. She's having to move, move, move to try and get the starlings to leave her alone. I don't know if we'll be able to see this elephant. I can't move where I am right now because I'm in the drainage line. But uh, hopefully the elephant comes out and then I won't have to move very far at all. But until then, and hopefully until I can show you Mrs. Wig again, I'll send you to Steve with Shidulu. <laughs> Elephant. Elephants do like to hide, but we've just repositioned for Shaduru. We actually uh, went for a quick comfort break and have come back, and now the beautiful Shaduru is posing like a queen on her throne. So it's very common for female leopards to sleep in the tree. Males do sleep in the tree, of course, but uh, they quite often will sleep on the floor because they're not as concerned with the predators. And a female often, if she does sleep on the floor, will sleep the floor, the ground, everybody. I know many of you dislike it when I say the word floor. On the ground, she will often do it a little bit further away because if another predator came in, they would go straight for the kill. They wouldn't be going for her. They wouldn't be going for her, they would be going for the meat. So if she's not on it, it's a good chance that she will avoid any negative behavior. She's gonna have a vehicle leaving, leaving the sighting. They won't be driving through frame because they're much shorter. Will give us opportunity to reposition if we see fit. But I think we are in the best place right now. Saz, as far as I'm aware, yes, she's been mating with Tortoise Pan. And she's also been catching flies. Boy, also been catching flies. But she was mating recently. Um, last week, when I got here, I was told. She'd been with Tortoise Pan around uh, Arethusa Lodge. When she first moved on to Juma, this is an area she really enjoyed hanging out in, this Rebecca's drainage line. Um, just a little bit down the drag from us is where Tlalamba spent a lot of her very young months. So this drainage line will flow in to the Mulwati. And so drainage lines like this provide the habitat for leopards to hoist like this. And there's also lots of nooks and crannies for them to sire or at least stash their cubs. Okay, well, she's now made herself more comfortable. I'm not sure if you noticed how full her belly was there, but she is not going to go hungry today. We will reposition again just now once we've figured out where she's going to sit. 
another vehicle with us to just stop to get another view from the, that angle. Someone else will probably be joining us soon, so we will reposition shortly so as to maximize the best position. Because we are going to spend the remainder of this drive with Shadulu, and I have no doubt this afternoon Tess will do the same. Calling all Wild Earth Explorers. We have a brand new prize for you to win. The lucky winner will jet off to the magnificent Amakala, where Lauren and the Wild Earth Roaming crew have spent the last two months for an incredible three nights day for two at the Shossi Game Lodge. Unwind, surrounded by the natural music of the wild, and enjoy daily safaris from an open vehicle. Sign up to be an explorer before the 14th of September, and you could be heading off to this unforgettable safari destination. Yes, here in Mara we have uh, the topi. Topi being a medium sized antelope. See, sometimes people say, for easy understanding, we call it the blue jeans and yellow socks animal. And topis are medium-sized antelope with a striking reddish brown to pulpish red coat. Distinct black patches. Oh look, maybe it better by the termite ants there. See, it's much disturbed. He want to sleep, maybe he want to take a nap. And topis usually take a nap or relax on early morning, but during the day they are much active so that they can graze. See, he's scratching itself. Maybe they are, the ants have bitten. Even the horn, very sharp and back. Oh, thank you so much, Hilda. Topis 
a most beautiful animal see they are chewing their cuds because as an herbivorous they are coming usually they do also migrate together with the zebras wild beast topis also do migrate in times of june july august and you see they are here right now in masai mara <coughs> slashing the red oak grass of the masai mara together with a beautiful common zebra look how they are beautiful I intend to compare what Hilda says between the zebra and the topi. I tell you both or topis are most beautiful. As you see the these are the common zebra. We have two types of zebra here in Kenya. The gravy zebra, those are with small stripe and this one with the bigger stripe are the buchel zebra. And also zebras usually migrate here to the, to the Kenyan side, Masai Mara, in times of June and July. Look at how the men their stands. This will tell you they are healthy. Look at he's shaking its head. Maybe intend to move. But what I tell you here is so much plenty of zebras, topis. The zebras, their color, or what we surely say is that zebras like camouflaging their color tend to camouflage to their prey when a prey maybe attack them or they confused the prey because of the black and white coat how beautiful is here we have also the ellis zebras and the topis being common here. The gestation period, the gestation period of our topi is 12 month oh thank you so much iris we have two uh, types of zebras the gravy and the common zebra the difference between them is their stripes there are found on also they are found or the gravy zebra are found on the on the northern kenya that is samburu and isiolo but the common zebras are found mostly here in masai mara and amboseli see how beautiful to see them Look at the men of that one. It's like well brushed with a well combed. That will definitely tell you they are healthy. The migration, you see, it's like a little migration here that is in Masai Mara of zebras. Plenty. The food for the lion, 
haina chita see they are now grazers as you know they are grazers they intend to ensure that before they go back to serengeti they have completely clean the entire vegetation of the Maasai Mara. Before they go back to Serengeti, they ensure that they have cleaned the entire vegetation or the red oak grass of the Maasai Mara. You see we have a mini migration here. The zebras and the topis goes together. So I figured I would do something a little different and come and check Leadwood Road for any leopard tracks. And lucky for us, we have managed to catch up with our pair of Warburg's eagles. So this is that nest that I found the other day with Gert. And it looks like we are even luckier. We have got both of the eagles in the nest. One pale morph and one dark morph. And the dark morph actually brought something and put it into the nest, but we couldn't see what it was, unfortunately. We saw it fly in and land. But there you can see, just on the left-hand side of the main trunk, there you can see the eagle sticking out. I know it's not the easiest view, and it is quite far away, so we can't really get any closer because we're not going to offer it for a nest. But it is cool to know that the dark morph and the pale morph were here and we can keep watching this nest. We might get lucky at some point in the next month or two and see some chicks and see them bringing in some food. Chances are they've only just come back. So they'll be getting the nest ready but may not have actually laid eggs yet. The earliest record of eggs was within two weeks of returning from the migration. It has been about that now, so it's not impossible that there are eggs there. But it is quite cool to to know that we can keep watching this nest. Interestingly enough, we also saw some yellow-billed kites while we were in the drainage line, and it's the first time I have seen them in months. They are inter-African, intra-African migrants. And I haven't seen them in ages. So it's nice to know the Wahlbergs are back, yellow-billed kites are coming back, I'm hoping bee eaters are going to be soon and woodland kingfishers are going to be soon as well. But the migratory birds are definitely pulling in for the breeding season. How exciting is that? It was a pair of yellow-billed kites and now a pair of Warburg's eagles. Oh, summer is just around the corner. And we'll be spending here. Oh, 
Ah, oh, apologies everyone. I think we may have lost Steve. Steve, where'd you go? I don't know where he went, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. You can stick with me. <clears throat> we just left the Warburg's Eagle's Nest on Leadwood. We are looking for leopard tracks and we found fresh elephant though. That's exciting. So we have had quite a few odds and ends elephants today. Interestingly enough, every single one has been a bit unrelaxed. Every single one. We haven't found one elephant that has been relaxed enough that we can sit still with it and actually show you clearly. Which is odd. So I don't know what they know that we don't know, but they know something. So much so that we went and changed our route because where the elephants have come from, they seem very unrelaxed. So it was definitely worth checking out. I'm trying to think what our next migratory birds are going to be that come back. European rollers, woodland kingfishers, all the bee eaters, southern carmine bee eaters, European bee eaters, those are all coming up now, this month. Could be very interesting. I think everything's going to come back a little bit early. We've already noticed that with the Warburgs and now with yellow book kites. Summer is well on its way. hyena tracks this morning but other than the tracks that led Steve to Shadulu I've not seen any other tracks and no other tracks have been called in by anyone on Juma this morning so and we've had quite a few vehicles in and out because of the elephants because of Shadulu we've had quite a few vehicles and the hyena den although it was inactive people still want to come and check Yeah, it's been a quiet morning on tracks. Hopefully that changes soon, but it sounds like Samuel has got a lion that is drinking. You don't want to miss it. Uh, thank you. We have one of the Orca Juronkai pride uh, quenching her dust. You see, even the legs there will definitely tell you that she might have eaten something and that is why she has decided to come and quench her thirst at this early morning. As I see, maybe she has taken a very nice uh, cock or juice and that is why she's full. A female uh, lions usually are the ones that hunt most compared to the males. And one of the Orkejuronkai pride seems like she's full. And as you see her, she's now moving. Uh, maybe to go and now now maybe she's moving to go and take a nap after a busy night or after becoming she has eaten so now she intend to go and sleep Females usually are the most hunters. And as you see, the two of them, one is on top of a termite. And after she has come and take up a thirst, she's now full. As 
actually, yes, lions can take up to one day without not even taking water. When they hunt, they definitely will go for water as a way of quenching uh, their uh, thirst. See how she might go and bromance with her sister. And whoa, yawning. Hi, my dear. Hi, how are you? Look, bromance of lions is another way of friendship. So you see the Orkejuronkai pride there on a termite hill. Lions uh, usually swing their tail at the back by chasing flies. Frida, as I see uh, these uh, beautiful lionesses, I see there are probably three to four years because you see they are so much strong and very healthy. That will definitely tell you they are on their teenager edge and they look very cute. Lions, especially females, usually are the one that do take care of their cubs. And that is why you see this one is on top of a termite protecting even to oversee what's going on on the savannah grassland of Masai Mara. See how she's doing with her ears. She's chasing the flies. missing Ask for a link again. Cat a day, cat a day. It's the best kind of way to have a Saturday. <laughs> We've got something a little bit different on a termite mound. Also a predator, but much more scaly. Isn't it pretty? So there is a pretty big monitor lizard right on the top of this termite mound. It's just got its feet and its claws over the edge and its head poking out towards us. We can't really get any closer for now because then it's going to disappear. So we're going to stay at this distance. But I think this lizard is just so happy to be getting some sun on this termite mound. It's a double effect, double whammy. It's got its stomach on the warm surface of the termite mound and it's got its back facing into the sun for maximum impact. Being ectothermic, it cannot control its own body temperature. So, as it's swaying its head in the wind, looking for some potential prey, it's just enjoying a lovely sunny session to warm up the body. Now, we have seen this monitor lizard here before. We've also seen some rough-scaled, large-plated lizards here before. I haven't seen this particular monitor lizard, though, in a while. It was resident here, disappeared for a bit because I think it got a little bit too cold. Now that it's warming up, it is back. 
very excited. Oh, look at how it's moving its head. So it is being pretty active considering it might not look like it. That movement though is pretty good. Copy that. Thanks, Tristan. I'm approaching Cheetah Cut Line now. I'll have a look. Yes, you're on here on the central driveway. You'll find my footprint there and where we marked the last track. On that first corner of Shirobi Robi as you get there, she was sleeping and then she cut back in the north um, westerly direction from there. Beautiful. Thank you. Tristan has found leopard tracks. Predators, predators. And Lovu everywhere, and then Shidulu is uh, on a bamba, Nyala bamba, uh, just west of Bushbright. Uh, uh, yeah, apparently in Gala on Torchwood and Koro. Copy that, thank you. I often wonder, do you enjoy hearing the radio chatter? I think it's quite fascinating. Copy that. I suppose it gives everybody a chance to practice a different language and <laughs> <laughs> learn, how, um, learn how things go. It's very cool, I think, hearing radio chatter. It's definitely an experience of being on the vehicle because we have to chat to each other constantly. But I'm just loving, loving, loving this monitor lizard setting itself. Maybe that's what I should do today. I think I should go and lie on a termite mound somewhere and just sun myself. I do need to tan. I need to tan the underside of my arms and definitely my legs. <laughs> so maybe I should have a tanning session like this monitor lizard. But it's most likely looking for frogs and insects and smaller reptiles and rodents. It's going to be amazing. Hopefully it gets a good meal today. But I can see some elephants in the distance and I do want to go and check out if there's any leopard tracks coming in. So I'm going to send you over to Chris on the move. Right, we are back to the car. We've managed to locate those buffaloes that we heard and the elephants who's just literally just to our right. These buffaloes are very nervous. I've also seen a cow that have some some cuts on her back, very likely induced by a lion. They're not very happy, these buffalo. I would not be surprised if this you can see there's one cow. You can see the blood in the back there, the one in the front. So there's a good chance of lions being around here. Okay, one car is covered, okay. covered in blood in the back. So while we watch the buffalo, maybe tomorrow is the 11th of September, and there will be a town hall meeting with the CEO of Wild Earth, Graham Wallington. We will be hosting that uh, town hall meeting, and that will be at 8 p.m. Central African time. And this is only for the Wild Earth Explorers, so in order to view that, you need to be a Wild Earth Explorer. And this is a great opportunity for you to give feedback, suggestions, complaints, or anything that you feel could help us improve our show. Just uh, We also had to stop responding to all the feedback emails from our viewers because there's just too many but do value input though and we would definitely encourage you to become part of the explorer club so we can then get your feedback graham will basically answer the questions that are sent to him and he's also going to share some interesting behind the scenes information about wild earth tv so you can head, head over to wildearth.tv slash townhall or scan the QR code. 
Right, back to the buffalo. There's definitely a cow that's got some lacerations on her backside, on her rump. So we need to check this out. We need to check this out. We're still with the buffalo, they're just a little bit closer now to Leopard Dam, they ran off and we had the elephants, like I mentioned, just to our right and this is those bulls that we encountered earlier on foot. So it's not a breeding herd, it is actually a group of bulls. That was such a lovely encounter, wasn't it? Remember last week when I mentioned how the elephants eat the tips of these burnt branches? Here's a perfect example. Now with the fire that raged through here, some of the smaller bushes, the sugars in the cambium of the tree, that layer between the bark and the sapwood, there's a lot of sugars and things in there, nutrients and those caramelizers, so it's virtually like candy for these guys. So one would almost expect an area is burned, you know, you get the impression that there's no food, it's all barren, it's black, it's burnt. But yet, out of this strategy almost, comes opportunity and renewal. All the dead grass has been burned off. And this will stimulate the good grasses to dominate the area again. It would have burned off all the, the perennial grasses, all the, you know, all the increase of ones and twos and you want the decreasers to dominate and fire is a great stimulant for that a lot of that dead material that is burned creates ash and that will also be a bit of a fertilizer for the soil as well it's all about grass grass 
is probably the most important plant community that we have in the African savannas. It essentially defines these savannas. And here we have wooded savannas. More specifically, what we refer to as mixed woodlands on granite. And then more specifically, red bush willow, northorn marula bushveld. So you've got a wider sort of grouping savanna. And then you start taking it down. Alan, um, Alan, I would love to get to your question just now. Questions, does tracking on foot make me nervous? Uh, the reason I'm going to get you, I just need to reposition slightly. I'm literally going to move back a meter. Just to get another view of these ellies, I literally just need to turn the car a little bit. Alan, I'm gonna, not going to lie to you. There is times where I am nervous. Uh, especially if there's a close, close, close encounter where, you know, you remember a couple of months ago we had that elephant bull that charged us when we were on top of the copy. It does make you nervous. Line coming at you at 60 kilometers an hour makes you nervous. But with our training and especially experience that I've got, you use that nervousness as a tool to focus you. So yes, there's times where you are borderline afraid. But we've got some good training and good experience and we use that again to focus us and to deal with the task at hand. Generally when I'm walking the bush, I'm not nervous. I'm probably wary would be a better word to describe it. But no, I mean I've grown up in the bush literally. And I've also been a professional nature guide for just around 22 years during which time I've spent weekly more than four five six hours on foot in the bush being nervous is healthy it's healthy it keeps you on your toes keeps you vigilant keeps you sharp right well let's head over to Samuel in the Mora for now and then in the meantime I'm going to try and relocate on those buffaloes yes uh, from Chris uh, we have uh, one of the Orkejuronkai female having his hali breakfast. As you see, she has killed a zebra. Zebra are much yummy, tasty when it comes to the lion food. Very sweet and delicious. You see how she's eating the intestine there and her sister is joining her for the breakfast see there are two now how do the lions look when you see them in the jungle or in the savanna eating the zebra and female are much hunters they do hunt most and as you see the you can't compare the females with the lions big male lions that is why you see they are the one that have killed a zebra very yummy inside she intend to remove the intestines or the sweet part of of her food 
she might be full now that is why she is pumping and pausing and lions do protect their food when it comes to the vultures when the vultures tend to come or even the hyenas she might want to drag it because of the vultures are on the sky oh thank you so much yes it is so delicious and yummy for the lions and that is why zebras are much delicious as compared to the wild beast it's hard sometimes for the lions uh, to hunt zebras because sometimes they do kick them and one kick of a zebra might even hit the lion and make it confused see how she's going to the back leg the the inner tissues very much she's eating like aggressively maybe this uh, zebra have given her the crazy kick that is why she's tearing it with force lions are carnivorous as you know lions are carnivorous they usually go for meat and you see one can kill a zebra see how she, she's eating that might tell you that she might be the last one in terms of uh, pride or in terms of uh, sisterhood that is why she's the last one here because one is they are relaxing but she's very much busy eating her breakfast she might be late but it's better late than never so she is the one it is her chance now to take Zebras are so much fun. Okay, we finally found a decent herd of elephants. It's the same herd we can see in the distance when we were looking at the monitor lizard. And we're close to Mamba Road now, so we're just seeing if we can get closer to the herd. There are so many elephants all around us at this point. It just seems like it's an elephant's kind of day. Okay. So now I'm going to leave it here because they're all around us. There are babies everywhere. And it seems like everybody's super calm and just moving slowly. Elephants as far as the eye can see in every direction.
Interestingly enough, considering there's about oh, easily 40 elephants here, you can barely hear them. There are some very tiny calves. These are two of the bigger ones. But the rest of them seem to be hiding in amongst all the adults. Totally normal. Eating a branch that's whacking its in the face, literally. Look at that. As it's chewing the bark off, the branches are whacking this elephant in the face, smacking it hard. Oh, and look at that big cow right in the middle. She's got no tusks. This is Fang's herd. I wonder where Fang is. I recognize that big female. She's got very sunken in temples and no tusks. She's definitely part of Fang's herd. She's also got very oversized ears, it looks like, compared to the size of her face. She's beautiful. Welcome back to the elevated position of this sleepy Shadulu leopard. She has made herself very comfortable up there. If anything, she might move her kill a little bit higher and then she might come down from the tree as the sun gets warmer because this broad podalbitsia that she finds herself in is only just starting to bud some leaves. But it's not providing an incredible amount of shade. Gert is providing me with a great amount of shade, which is very pleasant. Rico sunbirds calling, white bellied sunbird, in fact. White man, she must be eight plus minus. Seven, between seven and eight and a half now. She was about three when she arrived in 2018. So to make her about eight or so now. Coming from the south and the west, from the Sagita property, the daughter of the Ingrid Dam female down that side. Shadudu just waltzed on to Juma. A big female leopard. And she just claimed the western side. Had a big fight with Tandy once. Gave Tandy a bit of a bit of a hiding on Aubrey's Road. Claimed the western side and very similar area to that that Hukumuri claimed. Mother of one successful cub so far, Kara, who it's interesting because Shadulu's a big female and Kara's a very small female in comparison, even her track is very small. Evidence that she has been mating recently. Maybe she'll decide to choose this drainage line here on Rebecca's to den in but uh, while we contemplate life going forward let's send you to Chris who has caught up with his buffalo
Mm. Buffalo herd and the Ellies have made their way now to Leopard Dam. Yeah, let's just watch them. Enjoy it. What a morning so far. What a morning. Elephants on foot. Climbing rocks. Now driving around finding elephants again. Same elephants. And the herd of buffalo. Really, really successful. It's exactly what I hoped for. Now there's Impala joining the show as well. A whole bunch of things there. Oxbeck is flying up. There's a hammer cop somewhere around. I saw a three banded plover running around here. Super stuff. Go ahead. Frank negative, all good, all good. I'm just chatting to Frank who's ahead of us, yeah. He's worried that he's in our shot, so I just had to tell him that he's all good where he is. We are perfect where we are. Hello, Tammy. Thank you for sending us those comments. Keep sending them. That means this is an awesome cat day Saturday. Even though we have not had cats yet. But we had the buffalo and the elephants. And we had elephants on foot. That for me was a definite highlight. I'm just now scanning with my binoculars to see if I can't see an yellow built ox back, huh? and I see there's a buffalo far in the distance. It's got a few of them, but it's a bit far for us. And while we're on the topic of questions, like I said, keep sending, keep sending comments, questions, anything that you would like us to know. Just head on to wildearth.tv slash questions. Also need to be registered on the site to do that. Or alternatively, just scan the QR code. Trying to see if I can't pick out that buffalo cow with the lacerations on her back. We're still not sure what caused it. The others were chasing it around. I'm not even sure if it is actually lacerations. It could be an injury caused by another buffalo as well, not necessarily lions. It could also be, also possibly be genital bleeding, perhaps giving birth that might have gone wrong. I will need to see the animal in order to make the right conclusion and I cannot pick it out from my vantage point where I am now. Buffaloes are not really seasonal, so they can give birth in this time of the year, although there's somewhat of a trend 
for them to give birth in the summer months, which is the rainy months. But they're not bound by season. I've seen calves being born in right in the middle of winter, in the dry season. Interesting that the gestation period is very similar to ours. A little longer though, actually. It's in fact 11 months, not 9 months like ours. But what I was referring to is not like 22 months like a elephant, nor is it 5, 6, 7 months like the other antelope. So it's 11 months, gestation period. Which is rather interesting because I'm from a cattle farming background. My family are cattle farmers. And the domestic cow, which is a relative of buffalo, the gestation period is only nine months. That is exactly the same as humans, or very similar. So, why would buffalo have an 11 month gestation period as opposed to a close relative of theirs, the domestic cow, which is only nine months? And the answer lies in is firstly the domestic cows is a domesticated species that were domesticated from a wild progenitor probably had a long gestation period but we've taken them out of the environment with predators for such a long time buffalo prime target for lions so therefore when the calf is born it needs to be ready to move with a herd literally directly after birth so therefore they've developed a slightly longer gestation period, two months longer than a domestic cow, in order for that fetus to develop even further. It gives it more time. So when it's born, it's actually stronger, ready to run, a little bit more developed than that of domestic cows. And that's why buffalo would have an 11-month gestation period as opposed to the nine-month gestation period of domestic cattle. Right, I'm going to try and just relocate back towards the rest of the buffalo who's leaving. So there will be a bit of movement. Sign up to be an explorer and stand a chance to win a three-night stay for two in the Mashatu Tented Camp in Botswana. Mashatu is the home to our beloved Escape to Nature webcam that brings you some of our best footage daily. Discover the meandering pathways to platform-mounted tents sheltered within the hush of trees and share a meal overlooking our abundant waterhole before heading out on a safari for even more incredible wildlife.
<sighs> what a beautiful afternoon it's going to be. Cat a day always provides. Last week we had a few leopards as well on cat a day, if I'm not mistaken. Don't forget everybody, this evening at 7.30 Central African time, we are going to be having a Mara fireside chat with David Gitu. Please, all explorers, do go and check that out. It should be quite exciting. It is, after all, our last week in the Mara, so a nice way to wrap up, nice way to consolidate things. This evening, Saturday at 7.30 Central African time. That's about an hour after the Sunset Safari concludes. So once again, checking a Western quarantine has been successful. We actually found male leopard tracks coming into this area from the junction of Fuertela Axis and Zoe's Western quarantine, and we followed them down. Found the elephants, and found where a female leopard had been sitting. Drove in her poo, which I'm still not very happy about, but it's okay, we haven't yet smelt it. And now we've had the most wonderful morning with the Duchess of the West, Shudulu. And she has been mating everybody. There's a approximately three month gestation period. It's not always successful mating. You can come in and out of estrus month in and month out until she is fertilized and then hopefully as she sits high up in this broad pod Albizia, scanning this part of her territory, she decides this is the most ideal drainage system for her new cubs when they do come around. That would be very exciting. When I started here in 2018, Tlalamba was housed just down the drag from where we are, and we got to see her every single day. It was very special. It was very, very special. Some beautiful moments. She's deciding whether she wants to go and have a drink. That is the direction of Tambeta. There are little pockets and puddles of water still in this drainage, which is what's made it so difficult to find leopards this last few days. The wind we had a few nights ago definitely have made it successful or made I'm sure lots of our leopards were successful to catch some prey they're all hidden away somewhere in the blocks we will be spending the next few days and this afternoon scratching around for some more signs I'd love to see where that male leopard who was in the area as well has gotten to I was actually surprised. I thought we might have found a male leopard on this kill. She is pretty vigilant though. I think she's looking downstream towards where that hyena went to. Who knows? Anything could happen. Bear in mind this is a live safari and things could change any moment. But Chris has caught up with some elephants this morning. Let's go see how he's doing. Got some more elephants approaching the water and they are right next to the car. Look at these guys. A couple of bulls. Our little guy with a broken tusk is also behind us. We got this young 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 boy, about six years old, six, seven years old, these two toddlers. Two young boys coming to investigate the car. Looks nice. Oh, there's young cousin over there. Hello, boykies. This is all inquisitive. This is not dangerous at all. A lot of people ask me, 
Am I not worried about elephants this close to the car? None of these elephants are showing any sign of aggression. This is all inquisitiveness. Keep an eye on the big girl. Hello, big mum. This big girl here. If anybody's going to cause trouble, it will be her. But you can see she's perfectly calm, soft eyes. And I'm not worried about her at all. You often have these young bulls that will display a little bit, but I'm also not worried about that. It's all play. They're trying to show that I'm turning into a big elephant now. Look at this guy. <laughs> what do you want to do? Come. To the water. You're thirsty. I can see that. It's just a car. That's all it is. Nothing to see here. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, I just love him. How crazy was that? How crazy was that? Hi there, Joe. It's asking if an elephant's ever reached out to touch me in the car. Joe, indeed, indeed. I've had an elephant put its trunk right into my face, like literally smelling my face. It was a young bull as well, much like the one that approached us just now. Also came around and it's smelling, 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 and it literally touched my face. And I actually had mucus of it on my face. Quite an experience. It wasn't planned, I just had to sit very still at that time. And that was a wild elephant, you know? It was... It's not something we will try and plan. It's, it's, it's really not something you would, would want to plan. It just happened. I even had an elephant once. We were watching it in a mud wallow. We parked relatively close to it, a couple of meters. Watching it spraying mud on its back and it pulled its whole trunk full of mud. Looked at us and sprayed the entire vehicle like Vroom. Myself and my guests all covered in black mud. Much to our uh, enjoyment in a way. It was a very hot day. Like what we're gonna have this afternoon. It just it was very stinky mud. It wasn't very clean mud. Wow, what a morning, what a morning. I'm happy. I'm sure you all are also very happy. Elephants, buffalo, elephants on foot, elephants at the water, elephants around the car. Worked out very, very, very well. Maybe we'll repeat it again this afternoon. An amazing morning it has been indeed. I can't believe all of the luck. We have come back up into the open clearings and we're having a look, see if there might be any giraffes or anything like that around. We've seen some giraffe tracks, so we're having a bit of a scan. But it's always worth having a little bit of a listen as well. So it seems like it's heated up so quickly. I'm fairly sure Steve was talking about that uh, that Nyala becoming biltong soon enough. Now is the time when that process might start happening. It's definitely getting so, so hot that the birds have altogether stopped calling. So this is not a surprise. So maybe if we find Shadulu again this afternoon, I'm sure she'll still be there. Maybe if we head there this afternoon, then uh, that Nyala might be quite stiff. Quite stiff. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm fairly sure tomorrow is supposed to be up to around 37 degrees Celsius, which is much hotter than today. 
That is what the forecast said. So the last few days we've been bouncing between extremely hot and not too bad. Tomorrow is going to be extremely, extremely, extremely hot. <sighs> It'll be interesting. <laughs> you could hear him poor taking his jacket off, it's so hot. I've already taken mine off. <laughs> He's trying so hard to keep quiet, but it's a puffer jacket. It never stays quiet. <laughs> it's really funny, Impo. <laughs> I am absolutely mind blown at how today has turned out. It was a bit breezy this morning and it stopped. It stopped being so breezy. It's like everything is still. There's no there's no movement. There's only a slight movement of the occasional branch and that's it. But I was really hoping we might find some giraffes up here. There's so many yummy leaves for them, a lot of silver cluster leaves, some large fruited bush willow apple leaf, all sorts of yummy things. But maybe we'll get lucky with them a bit later. Mm, hello everybody, here we are still with Tlalamba. <laughs> Sorry, we've been talking about Tlalamba while you went with us. About Tristan coming to join us in the um, in a few days he'll be here in place of Tess and uh, we'll be working very hard to find that other beautiful cat. This is in fact Shudulu who I've no doubt has had major interactions with Tlalamba. They seem to have a bit of a ladies agreement about this drainage line here. Both cats quite commonly found on this western side of quarantine and now that Tandy is gone it seems like Columbus sort of moved far more towards the east spending a lot more time on cheetah cut lines she obviously young leopards will carve out parts of their mother's territory or move entirely like Shadulu did from her mom's territory and uh, Columbus was sharing space with her mom and then with Tandy's demise Columbus suddenly has the ability to claim as much of it as she wants to. But she can only take so much space, it has to be claimed, it has to be defended. Hmm. Anna Marie, well, it's my absolute pleasure. You say spoiling you. I can't tell you how much I enjoy this as well, sitting here. Here we go. Are we ready? She's going to come down. We're ready to give her a rating out of 10 for her dismount. <laughs> She's going to sniff the branch first. There, oh, there we go. Are you still alright, Gert? There we go. That's a little bit more shady. A bit of shade on the face. What a treat. What a treat. Well, we're not going to reposition unless you feel I need to, Gert. I think that's okay. She is uh, going to spend some more time here, and then she's probably going to come down, go for a drink. But as I said, there is water strung out throughout this drainage, which can satisfy that need. But she'll most certainly be in this area this afternoon to continue the Cat Day Fest. We love to find you cats on Saturday. Well, the elephant energy was very strong with us this morning. Beautiful elephant energy. That brought us to finding this gorgeous cat, Lalamba. I don't know why I keep saying Lalamba now. I'm losing my mind. I think it's because I'm starting to digest myself. It's getting quite hungry. We've been watching her feed this morning on this kill, and it leads one to develop a bit of an appetite. But what a special cat today it's been, everybody. We look forward to you joining us again this afternoon for the continuation of everything special from these wild places. We do thank you for your questions and comments and the other presenters and cameramen for being out and about. We'll see you this afternoon, same time, same place. Until then, good day and goodbye. <laughs>